Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John today. And now, the news. A new survey from Harris Interactive that was commissioned by Audi shows that Americans want the government to do more to spur the use of diesels. 65% of those polled would support lawmaker efforts to make diesel more accessible, and 66% think the government should offer a tax incentive for clean diesels. Interestingly, 57% feel the government has unfairly favored hybrids and electrics over diesel cars. But if diesel fuel was priced similar to gasoline, it could have a bright future. 59% of 18 to 34 year olds said they would purchase a diesel powered vehicle if the fuel costs were the same. Back in August, Volkswagen revealed the electric version of the Golf at the Frankfurt Motor Show. But now we've got details about the North American version. The e-Golf is powered by a 24.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack and a 115 horsepower electric motor. It moves from zero to 60 in a little over 10 seconds and has a top speed of 87 miles per hour. And its average range is between 70 and 90 miles on a single charge. The e-Golf goes on sale late next year in select U.S. markets. The subcompact car segment is expected to hit a approximately 6.2 million vehicles globally by 2017, which would represent a growth of about 35% and make it one of the most important segments in the industry. And yesterday in Brazil, Ford gave us a look at what its next global compact car will look like. Called the Ka concept, it's the second vehicle designed by Ford Brazil behind the EcoSport compact utility vehicle. Many of you may remember that Ka was first introduced in Europe in South America in the late 90s. Ford says the new car will have class-leading fuel economy, a roomy interior, and many features that are normally reserved for more expensive vehicles. The exterior of the Ka features many global Ford design cues, especially that front grille. But not much else was released about the car, so we will let you know more as soon as we do. The SEMA show in Las Vegas was not just for automakers to show off their wild customs, but also to show how their customers can upgrade and personalize their rides. Much of Chevrolet's display was littered with crate engines, brake upgrades, engine controller kits, and even this Copo Camaro that are all available in the brand's performance parts catalog. But of course, Chevy had its fair share of customs as well that featured some of those catalog parts, but also some accessories that are being evaluated for production. Check out this Silverado Cheyenne concept. It's a performance-oriented version of the pickup that shares some of its parts with the Wicked Z28 Camaro, like its ceramic Brembo brakes, 19-inch wheels, and its seats. The truck is powered by a 420-horsepower 6.2-liter V8, but was still able to shed over 200 pounds with carbon fiber replacements for the bumpers, tailgate, and inner cargo box. Jeff Gordon also got in the mix with the custom version of the all-new SS Sports Sedan that he had direct input on. It features a satin paint finish with number 24 graphics, custom 20-inch wheels, a carbon fiber spoiler, and custom front grille. The concept also boasts a lowered suspension, high-performance brakes, and a performance exhaust system. Coming up next, the democratization of luxury, coming to a Mercedes-Benz dealer near you. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. You've probably heard of the term democratization of technology as it applies to this industry. It's the idea that after new automotive technologies are developed and first applied by the various automakers to their racing machines, show pony supercars, or super luxury cars, and eventually that technology creeps down to models in lower price segments. This can be anything from electronics and safety gear to suspension technology, tires, aerodynamic learning, engine performance, and efficiency, with everything and anything in between. 
But coming hard on the heels of that is a new concept that seems to be arriving at a breakneck pace, but has heretofore remained unnamed, at least officially anyway, and that is the concept of the democratization of luxury. This new notion that some luxury automakers are embracing suggests that luxury, or luxury themes as the case may be, can be transitioned into lower price points while still maintaining the image integrity of the participating brand. And there are no bigger proponents of this notion than Mercedes-Benz, with its new compact entry, the CLA. With the base price just a few dollars under 30000 this is the car that Daimler is pinning its hopes on, the golden calf on wheels that will alter the company's future once and for all. The CLA is a mildly interesting entry, though burdened with glaringly cheap details throughout, that Mercedes operatives insist will alter the course of automotive luxury as we know it. They've actually talked themselves into believing that they can rewrite history and change human nature all in one fell swoop with the new CLA. Well, this just in, they can't and they won't. I find the marketing strategy for the CLA, the notion that you can throw that three-pointed star on anything and the people will come, is ludicrous. It's true that the people may check out the CLA, at least initially, or even buy it, but Mercedes executives are destined to find out the hard way that the wind that brought those people into the showrooms will whisk them away just as easily. With the CLA, Mercedes has brought itself within range of the Hyundais and Kias of the world, removing any last vestiges of specialness from the brand. And if I were a betting man, I wouldn't take odds on Mercedes rising above the fray for long. And that's the high octane truth for this week. And make sure you check out tonight's episode of All In After Hours with John of Town. I'll be joined by Frank Marcus of Motor Trend, Todd Lassa with Automobile, and Gary Vassalage from Automotive Design and Production to discuss the latest industry issues. So hop on over to Autoline.tv tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern for some of the best insider discussion in the business. That's it for today's show. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tonight.